kick the tailgate live from Ennis Free in Tuscaloosa and a very popular guy around here. When you win a national championship as a quarterback, I have to imagine it's it's pretty nice to come back. Jake Coker, kind enough to join us here. Thanks for your time this morning. We oh, yeah. appreciate it. Thank you all for having me. Always a, uh, a good time coming to Ennis Free for, you know, for anything, but especially you know, meeting you all up here. How legendary is this place in Tuscaloosa? Had a lot of celebratory beers in this place. Uh, it's uh, no, it's just like you know. every Alabama fan. There's plenty to celebrate at all times. Everybody's just drinking constantly. Yeah, it's been a good run. It's been a good run. Uh, Jake, by the way, one of the uh, uh, 14 quarterbacks to win a national title at yeah. Alabama. So yeah. there's a lot of them. Yeah, that it, it was special like six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, I guess we're gonna have a reunion at some point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is, no, uh, is there anything that stands out, though, like about winning a national championship here at Alabama, like the week of the game, the game itself, anything that you have? like? Yeah, no, I mean, so I grew up in Mobile, yeah. uh, big Alabama fan, went to Florida State out of high school, and, um, you know, I, I thought Alabama and, and uh, Florida State were the best two offers I could get. Florida State, because Jimbo was there, and I think he's probably still the best quarterbacks coach in the country. And Alabama because obviously Coach Saban and and you know how strong this program has has performed uh, even when I was back in high school and so anyway uh, went to Florida State because they offered me first and and things just kind of ended up happening the way they happen and I was lucky enough to fill a dream to to win a national championship here so uh, really enjoyed my time here and coming back especially coming back and seeing the guys in industry I spent a lot of time with after games it's it's always fun to to have a few beers with him and have a good time. Do you believe Jimbo when he says that he's not going to LSU? That he's got ranches in you, Texas? I, and you know, there? actually, I saw him. So I went to the Alabama A&M game. We, were there. I, we no, also did. Okay, yeah. okay. I went out there with a bunch of old Florida State teammates, and so we went and saw Jimbo on Friday before the game. And, and uh, you know, listen to how much he loved it out there. And he does have – I know he's got a lot of property out there. He's, he's doing a lot of hunting on. And, uh I, I don't see him leaving, but, you know, who knows? Uh, college football is kind of crazy. So you never know what might happen, but I know he loves it in, at A&M, the college I station. I don't know why I remember this story, Jake, but whenever you transferred here to Alabama, Saban was really upset with the media that they just assumed that you were the starter. It's like the, the media proclaimed you the starter, and he did not want to do it. You remember him being, like, upset about that behind the scenes at all? Yeah, but, well, I mean, you know, behind the scenes. It was like a media day thing. He didn't say much. Well, I say that. I mean, I to be honest with you, back then I didn't have Twitter or Instagram yeah, yeah, or anything because yeah. I was just trying to hide from <laughs> all that the hype machine and and uh, I, I vaguely remember it, but I, I still remember stories even outside of having the social media platforms. Uh, I was like the starter while I was still the backup at Florida State. Yeah. <laughs> just insane what kind of rumors were out there and, and how that escaped and leaked. Uh, you know, so I mean, yeah, it, it was definitely a hype machine, and I can see where he was annoyed by it, but I, I definitely heard it as well. Has he mellowed out at all over the years? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I've 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 heard some stories. I mean, I remember when guys, you know, had had the wrong logo on their socks, and they just get their ass ripped and, and walk, <laughs> you know walk through. Uh, but now I, I hear some guys getting away with with a few things they they used to not be able to get away with. Yeah. But uh, I, I mean, Coach Saban still Coach Saban. Of course, nobody gets away with much. Well, there's so you know, there's always the comparison with Bear Bryant and Nick Saban, right? For obvious reasons, two of the greatest coaches of all time. Nick Saban, the greatest coach of all time in college football, but Bear Bryant was very difficult to play for if you were the quarterback. Yeah. And there's legendary stories about how he would sit or stand and watch before they ran out with the quarterbacks and talk to them. How difficult was it with Nick Saban? I know he's a defensive guy first, and that's his background. But being Nick Saban's quarterback, how how big of a burden is that? Well, it's it's I guess it's nerve wracking when you're in the position that I was in. It was uh, you know I, I I never really was given the reins until halfway through my senior year, and so you know his big thing is you don't have to win the game, just don't lose it. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, don't turn the ball over, don't make mistakes. You know, basically our you know our defense will. We'll keep us in games and you just got to make sure you get it to the right guys and be a facilitator and so uh you know i spent probably that first half of that season really nervous about you know where i was going to go with the ball and, and i was probably a little late in getting the ball out sometimes and and uh, i feel like i progressively got better as the year went on but you know you just knew when you threw that interception and, and you looked over the sideline and just like 
you know, you just see this father figure over there like, damn it. <laughs> you know, you're just like, I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. <laughs> you only want to walk over and see him at that point, right? You're just <laughs> yeah, like, that's, right. yeah, this you see is not going to be You see good. him throwing his headset, and you're like, right, I'm going to go on this end. I'm going to go to our quarterback coach now <laughs> yeah. and run that way. Jay we go Coker in the booth. is our yeah. guest here. And we, we look at the college football rankings that came out, right? And you look at the top four coaches are all either Nick Saban or somebody that has been on Nick Saban's staff. Oh, yeah. I played for every single one of those coaches. It's crazy. So, I, mean. I mean, we all know that, <laughs> yeah, that it's, Saban it's is the greatest, but but how has he been able to have such a coaching tree that, that we now see them all at the very top of the college football playoff rankings? Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of really good coaches out there as far as X's and O's go, but I think he teaches guys, you know, how to run a program and how to how to coordinate everybody, get everybody on the same page and run it like a CEO and, and really organize a program. And, and so I think everybody kind of goes to him for that that knowledge and then they kind of figure out how to build that program and, and really set a foundation. And so I think it's more so off the field things than it is really on the field. And his, I mean, his discipline, the guy was there, we'd show up for workouts at 5.30, his car was there and then we'd be leaving at like 6.30 and his car was there. And he's like, I can't remember how old he is, but you know, most guys that age are asleep. He's older, you know, he's older than us. Yeah, Let's just right. say that. He's older than us. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. But he's, I mean, on off the field, he's, I mean, the best coach anybody could play for. I mean, he's just, he's got it all. He, you know, he's got a charisma about him, a confidence about him. Um, it's, it's hard to say, you know, if I had a son, you know, getting recruited by him, it would be hard to tell him to go anywhere else.